So the Ring of Kerry, what to see if you only have one day, coming up. Hello adventurers, this is Niels from Adventures in Quiet Places and on this channel we share tips for your trip to South West Ireland, including the Ring of Kerry, which we're doing today. Now you can absolutely do the Ring of Kerry drive in just one day. Honestly, the drive itself is already the main attraction. It is just so beautiful driving around this peninsula, but there are also some very interesting stops along the way. So we are starting today in Killarney. We're not starting in Mokros House. We're not starting in Mokros Gardens. We're not going to Torque either. No, we are starting in Mokros Abbey. Beautiful place, nice and quiet, especially early in the morning. It's a fantastic place to start your Ring of Kerry drive. This was originally a Franciscan Abbey built in 1448. During the time of Henry VIII, it was heavily suppressed, just like all monasteries across the British Isles. It came back after Henry's reign, but during Cromwellian times, it finally met its demise. The yew tree that you find inside of the inner courtyard is truly something special. It's really old and rumored to be as old as the abbey itself. As we're enjoying the surroundings of the abbey right here, I want to give you a rundown of what the idea is for today. What we would like to share with you are the best places in both nature and culture on the Ring of Kerry, all through the eyes of us as a local. So really what we think will give you the best bang for your buck and which places you should absolutely see. Now this is going to be a jam-packed day, so feel free to either add or remove places. This is just what we think will really just add and, and give you a fantastic day. For the culture stops, we try to give you places that cover the whole of Irish history, all the way from ancient, ancient history before even the rise of humans, down to the Neolithic, the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, early Middle Ages, the early modern period, which you are seeing right here with the Abbey, and even the colonial times later on with the lighthouse on Valencia Island. Do you pick the things that you think are fantastic, add, subtract, and just enjoy? So that was Muckross Abbey. We're off to the Gap of Dunlow now. What do you think? Good start? Mm -hmm. We're driving the Gap of Dunlow right now. The funny thing is, it's fantastic if you have a car, but if you don't have a car, if you come here with either a tour bus or a taxi, they'll drop you off right at the mouth of the Gap of Dunlow. And that's the non-interesting part. So what a lot of tourists do is they, they walk like 100 meters, or perhaps if they're very adventurous, like a kilometer. And they go like, yeah, yeah, this is nice, but I'm not quite sure what all of the fuss is about. That's because you're not seeing the interesting part. Um, you get to the interesting part with a car. So you guys driving along with us today, you're in luck. We'll go through the whole thing and you get to see the nice parts. So we're still at the end of tourist season now. So we're still in season. You will see that it's still busy. Now when you come out of season or you go really early in the morning, there won't be that many people around. There won't be that many cars and you have the feeling that you got the whole thing to yourself. If you go in the middle of winter, there's no one around. No one. So we made it, it's a windy day up at the Gap of Dunlow. God, it was really busy with cars, so if you can, go either very early in the morning or out of season. So most people would turn straight back around and go back to the Ring of Kerry itself from the Gap of Dunlow the moment that they get to the actual pass. Not us, we're going down into the Black Valley, so on to the other side. We're going to enjoy our breakfast at the uh, Lord Brandon's Cottage. It's a beautiful little estate inside of the Black Valley. The 
closer you get to Lord Brandon's cottage, the more we get the feeling that you're driving through the Shire or into Hobbiton with the windy roads and the small little waterfalls. Lord Brandon's cottage is not open year round, so just look up before you do intend to come down here. Uh, if it is open and if it's not, do bring your own packed lunch or packed breakfast because it's still wonderful to enjoy outside of the main gates. Time for a cup of coffee. Also, they've got toilets here inside a tip. <laughs> that little intermezzo was just perfect. Mm -hmm. Would be a shame if you missed the Black Valley on your Ring of Kerry drive. This, this place is just magical. Mm -hmm. So, next up, we're going to do a little bit of driving back through the Gap of Dunlow, and our next stop is going to be Glen Bay Beach. On the other side of the bay you are seeing the Dingle Peninsula, so that's what you're seeing if you're looking northwards. And on the other side of the beach and the bay, that is the Kerry Peninsula. Oh, that was fantastic! Next up, Curaçaoville and Valencia Island. We made it to Curaçaoville. First up, Snacks. What do you have? Ice cream. Yes. <laughs> so the snack expedition has been successful. There's a lot to see in Karsavine. There's the, the old barracks. There is a beautiful old castle that at the moment, unfortunately, is too dangerous to visit. There are two old Iron Age ring forts. We're gonna all ignore that and go straight for Valencia Island with the ferry. There's so much to see on the ring that we have to make choices. We're gonna go to, uh, to Valencia Island. You can go to Valencia Island by a bridge, so you don't necessarily have to take the ferry, but hey, we're here. If we make it into an adventure, we'll take the ferry. There's so many sites to see on Valencia Island. It's difficult to make a choice. The two that we've done for today, that we highly recommend is the lighthouse, including gorgeous standing stone, that I'll be passing in just a second, and the tetrapod track, which are some of the oldest land animal tracks in the world. Absolutely stunning, and they're very close together. The surroundings are just beautiful. So that's the lighthouse where we just were. And right around the corner is our next stop, the Tetrapod Tracks. 350 million years old. So these are some of the oldest tracks from uh, amphibious creatures crawling out of the ocean onto the land that we have. There's only like two or three of these kind of places in the world. Now, don't expect huge tracks. It's not like dinosaur big, meter long salamander kind of a um, dimension. So set your expectations. It's pretty darn fantastic to see something that old and that unique in the whole world, right here on Kerry. And we've got Dingle and the Blasket Islands in the background. And there the trek continues. And that is it for Valencia Island. We are off to the Kerry Cliffs, potentially even better than the Cliffs of Moher. If you're getting some value out of this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help us out. And that way you get notified every single time that we post another video of either the Ring of Kerry, Dingle, Ring of Berra, Sheepheads Peninsula to make your trip just perfect. The tetrapod track was amazing, but our track back up to the car park, quite steep. 
Whew. Of course, everybody's going to make the comparison with the more famous cliffs of Moher up north. Now, the Kerry Cliffs are indeed less long, but they are higher than the cliffs of Moher. The uh, cliffs up north are about 700 feet or 200 plus meters in height, where the Kerry Cliffs are over a thousand feet or 300 meters in height. Now, me personally, that's not the main selling point for this place. It's the rock structure down below, which creates very interesting wave structures, which I find far more interesting here than at the cliffs of Moher. Of course, also, you've got the beautiful view over the Skellix, and here it's far less touristy, far less overrun by tourists than at the cliffs of Moher. As we finish our visit to the Cliffs of Kerry, most people actually turn left and go back to Port McGee and then to Carsevine and drive onwards toward Waterville. Honestly, in our opinion, that's a very dull part of the ring between Carsevine and Waterville. So instead, we are taking a right when exiting the Cliffs of Kerry and go straight up the mountain on the far more interesting drive of the Skellig Ring. And on the Ring of Skellig, just outside of Balin Skellig, you'll be passing this prehistoric grave which is called Coombe's Wedge Tomb. Now the tomb is on private land, but you can get close enough at the edge of the field to get a real good sense of just the dimensions and the beauty of this tomb. In local folklore, this is said to be one of the many Germit and Grania beds that were constructed as shelter by Germit for him and his love when they are on their flight from Finn's epic rage. There's supposedly uh, 365 of these kinds of German and Grainne beds in Ireland, one for every night of the year. And this is also one of the, the biggest of these kinds of tombs in the Hall of Kerry. And if you keep on following the signs for the Skellig Ring, you'll end up on the actual Ring of Kerry Road itself, just outside of Waterville. And again, we think this is a far more interesting and more beautiful drive than if you were to take the normal Ring of Kerry route between Carsevine and Waterville. We're here at Cahar Steige or Steige Fort, which is one of the best examples left in Ireland of an Iron Age ring fort. And don't get me wrong, there are tons of Iron Age ring forts in Ireland. As in, if you look at the Ordnance Survey map, they're dotted everywhere. But this is one of the best examples left. Take a look at the structure and the stairwells here. So this place has a fantastic local legend connected to it about fairies and Gaelic football. The story goes a little something like this. Apparently there was a huge rivalry between the fairies of Steigerfort and those of the Kahargal stone fort, which is right next to Carsevine, which we passed earlier. Now this rivalry was fought out in ferocious games of Gaelic football played on moonlit nights. Apparently there was a local by the name of Conin Dinehy who entered one of these moonlit games 
and scored two of the winning goals for Kahar Galford. Now, when his mother found out that he entered and played with the fairies, she forbade him to do anything like that again. And when the fairies found that out, they cursed Kuni to lie prostrate on his bed for nine months. Now, what the moral is of that story, I'm not quite sure other than fear your local Irish mommy. They're, they're fierce. Next stop is my favorite little town in the Ring of Kerry, and that is Kenmare. Kenmare is a lovely little tourist town with, in our opinion, the best restaurants on the Ring of Kerry. Really nice little tourist shops as well. We'll visit all of that, but first up, we're going to take a look at the Stone Circle. This is an absolute must see when you are in Kenmare. The entrance is two euros per person. Now, during the height of the tourist season, in the midst of summer, there will be somebody there to take that entrance fee. But if you're coming outside of the height of the tourist season, like we are right now, there will only be an honesty box. We are at Kenmare's Stone Circle right now. This is really easy to get to from Kenmare town centre itself. There are actually three stone circles that you come past on your Ring of Kerry drive. The first one is in Killarney, but that one is off limits for both locals and tourists. It is in such a uh, fragile state that you can't get to it. It's really off limits. The second one is near Waterville. That one is completely overgrown and in, also in terribly bad shape. And it's a little bit off the beaten path. so. Very rarely is it ever visited, even by locals. And the third and last one is here in Kenmare, in this beautiful little park. So come and take a look, it's really worth it. What you see there in the middle is a so-called boulder burial, which is a megalithic expression of burials, which is very unique to Ireland and specifically to South West Ireland. So you're really seeing something quite unique here inside of the stone circle itself. As you can tell, it's been a very long day already. So what a lot of people tend to do is make Kenmare their end stop for the day. This is where they have their dinner. This is where they stay for the night. And then the next day they move on for the last leg of the journey, which is up to Moss Gap and down into Killarney National Park and Ladies View. Especially if you're a little bit later in the season towards winter or early springtime, there's far less daylight left. And as a result, it's easier to make sure that you capture that last leg of the journey ladies view particularly with ample daylight so a lot of people they stay in Kenmare and then move on the next day I'm gonna do a, a quick visit to one of my favorite places in Kenmare to stay and that is the Rose Garden we're gonna pay a visit to Mary what kind of people come here um, so mainly our cafe we have local um, so most people will be local or people attending weddings or events in the area and then with the B&B, there will be European, American, and also attending functions or events in the area. That's a nice combination, actually, with locals and tourists. Yeah, do do they mingle? Place. Yeah, they do, yeah, I find, yeah, they all mingle and they're all very happy. What do you recommend on the, uh, of the cakes? Of the cakes? Yeah. Um, I like kind of fruity cakes, so the lemon tart, pear and almond. We do a lovely orange passion fruit cake. You're not uh, mentioning so, the yeah. pecan. There's a lovely chocolate pecan if you're a chocolate fan. <laughs> the Rose Garden is located about five minutes of a walk outside of Kenmare Centre. It has a really nice little menu. It has a very good B&B. Mary will take very good care of you. You can find links down in the description for more information. Now let's keep on driving. After visiting the lovely tourist shops and having a bite to eat in Kenmare, we're going for our last leg of the journey. We're going back up into the mountains again, over Moss Gap, and down towards Ladies View and back towards Killarney. In our eyes, this is the most beautiful part of the Ring of Kerry. Although everything is stellar, this part particular with the views over Killarney National Park and Killarney's lakes is just gorgeous. And down there you can see the Black Valley and Lord Brennan's College where we were earlier this morning. Now we did make this part of the recording in the early morning hours before we started at Mokros Abbey just because we had to come out of Kenmare to get to Killarney. You could probably tell that by the light change.
We're making our way back towards Kalani to the place where we started earlier this morning. Now, I did make another video for you guys with my 15 best driving tips as a local and I think will be handy for you as you're navigating these very narrow winding roads on the Ring of Kerry. Check it out, I'll add it to the end cards and as always if you got some value out of this video give it a like and I'll see you guys in the next video.